just through here. In the Kangaroo Island bush just over 40 years ago, teenager Andrew Bennett made a shocking discovery. Now that's sort of where it was, just over there. OK. Mr Bennett and his friend found a man's body only metres from a main road. It had gone unnoticed for up to five years. It was just skeletal remains with clothing on it, really. It gets a bit thick, though. Now Mr Bennett is taking police back to the scene as part of a fresh investigation into the 1983 missing persons case. You've come through here, and what else do you remember about that day? Uh, just in there and had a bag alongside him. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just laying on the ground? Yeah, just laying on the ground. We uh, hightailed it out of here and went back to the tennis courts to tell other people, which didn't believe us. Senior Constable Trevor Snyder from South Australia Police is leading the new investigation. It's one of 15 historical unidentified remains cases he's been looking into since 2020. Unfortunately, this person, the identification, despite a lot of rumours circulating on Kangaroo Island, was never determined. There was speculation that it was a teacher or something, but we never really heard anything about it. After making little progress, Senior Constable Snyder started looking at new DNA investigative methods to offer hope taking samples for forensic testing in Canberra. So we essentially wanted to create a one-stop shop of forensic techniques where we could collaborate with the investigators to try and see if we could resolve those cases using the tools available. Associate Professor Jody Ward runs the National DNA Program that is working to give names to up to 750 unidentified human remains across Australia. So here we are, potentially decades later, now applying the newest forensic techniques available. One of the newest DNA matching techniques is known as Forensic Investigative Genetic Genealogy, or FIG. It took new advances in DNA matching to finally catch him in 2018. It's the technique that helped solve the infamous Golden State Killer case in the US. So at that point, you know, law enforcement agencies all over the world saw the potential of this technology. And, you know, so did we. FIG involves DNA from unidentified remains being analysed and compared to samples on publicly available genealogy websites such as GEDmatch and Family Tree DNA. What this technology allows us to do is link to those more distant cousins and then build back their family trees to the present day. And then for the first time in Australia, Jodie Ward and her team made a breakthrough. We saw that we had two high confidence genetic matches. That then opened up and rejuvenated the investigation. Through the identification of distant cousins, a common ancestral couple was identified back to the late 1800s. That narrowed the possibilities from millions of people to several hundred descendants of that couple, and most likely one of their many grandsons. Investigators were then told to focus on one family of 11 children. James Hardy lives in New South Wales. His brother had been reported missing after vanishing from Enmore in Sydney in the 1970s. Yeah, left his wallet and car keys. It was a strange setup, you know. I'm, I'm in. I never got answers. He heard nothing for 45 years until two policemen had come to the uh, my front door and told him told me to inquire and ring up um, ring up uh, Trevor Snyder. When he identified that his brother William was missing, um, was really. Uh, amazing. It was uh, suddenly this uh, euphoric feeling that we're actually putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. We had solved a missing persons case. Further testing confirmed James Hardy to be a sibling match to the DNA taken from the body found on Kangaroo Island, confirming William Hardy as the missing man and solving a 40-year mystery. I was dumbfounded. I could not believe how they, how they, found, how they found me, you know. It's, it's, it's incredible. To achieve this result is outstanding, not only certainly for the police, but also then to be able to provide some answers to the family after such a long period of time is very rewarding. But with their parents both dead, all photographs of William have been lost. A computer-generated image, the best police can do. It is a privilege to be able to give William his name back and reunite him with his family that 
have missed him for, you know, over 40 years. While William was the first person identified in Australia using this technique, others have followed. Just days after Jody's team confirmed the identification, they helped Queensland police identify Tanya Lee Glover. Detectives had been unable to identify her after her body was found in a Brisbane apartment complex last year. Police have revealed DNA helped formally identify her as Tanya Lee Glover. Ms Glover was vision and hearing impaired and was 38 years old when she was likely killed and buried in 2009 or 2010. I think these are perfect examples of showing the scope of this technology. Here we have a 40-year-old long-term missing persons case that has been resolved, you know, remains found in 1983, but Tanya Glover's remains were only found in December last year. Investigators say several other cases could be just days or weeks away from being solved. In October 2020, Detective Senior Constable Regan Cunningham from Queensland Police got a call from workers on the new highway site at Kaibong, south of Gympie. They discovered a uh, tooth attached to a bottom jaw. So from that point on, a, uh, a scene was declared. Police spent five days scouring the site for forensic evidence. They found shoes and clothes, but couldn't identify the remains. Regan Cunningham then came across the AFP's new DNA program. I immediately, the next day, I emailed off saying, hey, we've got the perfect case for you guys. And within, I think that afternoon, I got a call from Jodie. She was quite excited about it because that's exactly their field of expertise. The AFP's first round of DNA testing yielded some insights. The unidentified remains found to be of an adult male of Asian descent and while the case has yet to turn up a match, investigators remain hopeful. We're now back in the running for it. Things will only improve, DNA technology will only improve. Yeah, we'll find out who this person is. It's the hope too of investigators that more people will opt to share their DNA data with police in the future. The results have been life-changing for James Hardy and his family. Tick that box. If it's going to find your loved one, absolutely tick that box, hey Dad? For police and the family, one key question remains unanswered, and that is just how did William Hardy end up here on Kangaroo Island, so far from home? It's the family's hope now that the composite image of William along with his identification will help prompt someone to come forward. How did he get to Kangaroo Island and how did he die? That's, that, that's never been answered. Trying to ascertain and trying to find some information about why he made this journey is really important to the investigation and we're certainly looking for the public's assistance. So if they know of any movements of William in the late 1970s or certainly while he might have been on Kangaroo Island, we urge them to contact Crime Stoppers and provide some more information. Those answers will allow police to finally close the William Hardy file and reunite him with his family. It's given Dad closure now that he can, he can finally lay, lay his brother to rest. We have renewed hope and we hope, you know, families of long-term missing persons have renewed hope that we were able to resolve uh, many more of these cases that previously could have gone unsolved. Ending sometimes decades of anguish and giving names to the hundreds of unidentified missing persons across Australia.